Hi, and welcome to Real Trail Talk, or Real Track Talk. I'm Donovan D'Souza from The Long Ways Better. And I'm Mark Pybus from The Life of Pi. Welcome to episode 41. We have another Tasmanian special for you, but this time we're going to be talking about the Bay of Fires Lodge Walk. So that was one that Karis and I did, and look who we have in the studio. It's Karis. Hello. Thanks for having me. Welcome back. Thank you. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about Bay of Fires. Where is it? Because I think, you know, for people in Tasmania, they'll probably know. But for people who, you know, a lot of people have probably heard of the Bay of Fires. But where, where in Tasmania is the Bay of Fires? So it's in the northeast corner. And it's on the very dry side of Tassie. So normally you think of Tassie, it's ferns and rainforest and mountains. This is kind of, it's more WA in its style where you get some really nice coastline that's granite. So you've got white beaches and then the forest around it is, it's coastal heath and kind of dry sclerophyll forest. So it's very much like southwest WA. Cool. Yeah. So it'd be very familiar landscapes to people. From yeah. WA, yeah. and so what? What is the Bay of Fires Lodge Walk? The Bay of Fires Lodge Walk is a Tasmanian walking company offering. So we're not, we haven't been paid to do this. We um, elected to go on this tour. Thanks. So this is a, a glut hike. This is a glut hike, but less glutty, I would say, than the Three Capes. Uh, mainly because, as we'll talk, one of the nights is kind of not roughing it, but it's it's camping. Um, so it's a four-day tour um, covering, I think it's roughly 50, 50 k's. And yeah, it's um, fully serviced by guides. Um, you stay in accommodation at night, which is on trail. Yeah, all meals provided. You only really have to carry your clothes and any other possessions that you want for the day. Cool. And so with the Three Capes, that was, you know, there's a public and a private offering. With the Bay of Fires, is this like a, a public and there's a private version or is it just the private version? Um, so it can be done as a public walk, but I'm not sure there's any places you can stay to exactly replicate this walk. Um, right. Where we were, we are kind of the northern end of what they call the Bay of Fires. And we started at a public campground, so you can start there. And I actually think on day two, we went through another public campground as well so potentially you could do campground to campground mm-hmm. um, and then I'm not sure after that because it then becomes private land further south before you get to the actual Bay of Fires but uh, a lot further south near Binlong Bay you can do up to 20 k's as a, a day hike um, that's an area we didn't visit but it's exactly the same as where we were exactly the same Exactly the same in as you'll get the orange rocks and okay. uh, nice beaches. <laughs> sure. Okay, so let's start with uh, with day one. So can you tell us a bit about this day? So Stumpy's Bay to Forrester Beach Camp. We had a, a very lovely breakfast. It was Easter Sunday when we departed, so breakfast options were kind of limited and we needed to be picked up at the hotel quite early. So I think we just had breakfast, a really rushed breakfast at the hotel. This was in Launceston? In Launceston. Um, so, yeah, they pick you up from the Seaball, which is where we were staying because you got picked up from there. And then we went to Quamby Estate, which is kind of the base of operations for Tasmanian Walking Company in the northeast. So they run their Cradle Mountain tours, um, Overland Track, Bay of Fires tours from there, where we met our two guides, Jesse and Joel, who had met 10 minutes prior to us stepping off the bus. <laughs> yes. um, I think um, Jesse was quite a, a new guide, whereas Joel was quite um, accomplished and had been with the company for a really long time. Yeah, I think almost a decade, maybe, whereas I think this was Jesse's second trip. I mean, they were still under 30. I think Joel was late 20s. Yeah, they were. Jesse was still a young pup. Um, so the group here was limited to 10. So there was a family of four who were from Sydney. Um, there was a mum and a dad who just sort of semi-retired and their two young sons. And, in their 20s. Yeah, in their 20s. And then another professional couple from Sydney who were probably late 30s, early 40s. Yeah, and they'd, they'd done similar activities before, so they had you know the strength to do it. So, yeah, we got the rundown at Quambia State and then on the bus again to the Bay of Fires. So, as you said, um, starting at Stumpy's Campground, which is in Mount William National Park. And, yeah, it was beautiful. Unloaded from the bus and on straight onto the beach, pretty much. 
Yeah, it was really beautiful there. Um, it was just quite tranquil. There were a few people fishing and being at Easter weekend, you know, there was a few more people than you normally get at that sort of thing. But um, it was a really nice starting point, really picturesque. And that was where we first got that image of that sort of West Coast beach that we're kind of used to here, that, that Dunsborough vibe. So this at first glance, what was your thoughts in terms of its its comparison to Western Australia? As you say, you know, there has that similar kind of look. Was it much the same or quite different or... You know, like, what's the difference there? Yep. I was worrying a little bit because it was really overcast, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was actually what uh, Joel described as the Bay of Fires mist. So it was more like whitish rolling mist than it was overcast. Um, but yeah, you could definitely tell it had a similarity to Southwest WA, just the, the white beaches and the bays. Yeah, I think um, overall, like, obviously it was very beautiful, but being from WA, I think we're a bit, we're, u- we're used to these beautiful beaches, so mm. it's not, everyone was a bit more wow, and we're like, eh, more of the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I was looking forward to getting away from the campsite area, just so, you know, away from people and it feeling a bit more wild. So th- is this a car camping place? Yeah, you can drive right, right in. So um, quite busy. Yeah. And then kind of, yeah, once everyone was ready and we were loaded up, just straight onto the walking, which was, it's just really a series of bays and beaches that you're walking on. Right. And luckily the sand was quite hard to start with. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. And the um, the main thing they say is that we have to follow that hard sand because of the birds that nest on the headlands. So you're definitely following that, that bay and going up to the peaks of the headlands and, and then mm. dipping back into the bays again. Mm. And there's lots of lots of seaweed everywhere. <laughs> well, not seaweed. What was that? What was Bull it called? Kelp. Bull kelp. Right. So I saw on, on the blog that it was 11.4 k's. Now, with this, how much of that is beach walking and how much of that is on harder surfaces? I would say about 95% of it, 90 to 95% of it was on the beach yeah. or the headland. Um, there was a little section towards the end of the day where we ducked inland to avoid probably a more rockier bay that we couldn't get over. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty much all beach walking today, which was fantastic. Cool. And is it, um, there would be no tracks, it would just be wild just on the beach? Yeah, you can pretty much see where you're going. There's like a little bit of a track if you get to a headland and you're ducking in and out of rocks and there's um, like a bit of sand you need to go to. Mm-hmm. It's quite easy to navigate. And we did stop for lunch quite early on one of the main, like the first real headland where it was the orange um, lichen covered granite, which was really cool. And um, Joel explained there was a shell cove kind of right behind it, but it was man-made. It was the Aboriginal middens that they used to go on. And that was, it's the reason behind the Bay of Fires. Everyone thinks Bay of Fires is because of the orange rocks. It's Mm. actually because um, when European settlers came in, the whole coastline looked like it was on fire because you had these middens um, where everyone would gather at the end of the day with their catch or what they foraged. And then they'd cook it all up between um, the various Mm. indigenous tribes. And all the shells there remain from, you know, all the pippies and things like that they'd had to share. And the um, the sand that's around there is quite charred and black, so you can see, you know, where those fires have been. It was a really nice Mm. sort of reflection spot. Mm. Because you're thinking like thousands of years of debris and burning. It was quite a sight to see. And it just kind of reminds you how long the indigenous Tasmanians had been there um, before we sadly... Almost wiped them out. Yeah, and, they, and um, he also explained a bit about the islands that were off the coastline. Yeah, so a lot of the, um, especially the Aboriginal women, were taken from the mainland and put on these islands, which we couldn't see on day one because of the mist. But, when you um, say the mainland from Tasmania. From Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> the mainland of Tasmania, yes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, after lunch, yeah, straight onto more beaches. Uh, and it actually got really moody. Um, with the weather, it was overcast, and because we'd started around lunchtime and still had to do 11 k's, um, we were hiking in kind of mid-afternoon, and the sun was setting behind the overcast conditions. And it looked really cool, and I remember I had my sunnies on, and I was just like, "Here, look through these sunnies," because it's like a bit of a tint, and you weren't impressed with that. <laughs> <laughs> Not overly, um, and that's how we stumbled across the um, deceased pilot whale. Ah, yes. Um, so I think it was Jesse or Joel said that it had been there since January and you look at where it is and it was on the orange rocks um, and it must have been pretty stormy and then thrown up over you know, the wall of rocks there mm. but it had long long been dead and was in the final stages of decom- 
decomposition. Yeah, and it was quite funny though because the the skin had sort of almost looked like rubber, like it didn't look real anymore. And apparently, someone had already come along and pilfered all the teeth. Oh, really? But we were warned of the smell, but it wasn't too bad that day. Mm-hmm. I once saw a dolphin that had been washed up like that. And it was it it really smelt and. Yeah, the, the skin does get a kind of a weird look about it. Yeah, it separates from the body. It's very weird. Yeah, and yeah. just, yeah, the positioning of it was just crazy. We just, how did it get here? That must have been a really big, you know, king wave or something. Yeah. Mm. So moving on from, I guess, quite a sad um, cetacean sighting, <laughs> you saw some actual dolphins. Yeah, so as we were waiting, because we got to the end of this really long beach and we were... Um, Joel said to stop here because we were going inland and we're just kind of waiting around then all of a sudden there's dolphins frolicking offshore which was uh, they were quite far away it would have been a good sighting I was trying to get them with the camera but they were so far away and you had to get the timing right and it's just yeah just weird but um yeah we started the inland section which was just more of a, a slight detour to take us off the beach um and just lots of cool um grass trees which they called them pandanis, and to me, pandanis in Tassie are the big, tall, alpine yeah. pandanis. Um, so when we were confronted with like grass trees from back home, I was like, "Oh yeah, I know them. They're cool." They did look a bit different. Like they had a bit of a different um, growth structure to the ones we had here, so you could tell that there was a little bit of a difference. But yeah, bit of a reminder, but a bit different. Mm. And then uh, onto the last little section, which was just a couple of beaches, and we saw swans in the ocean. Yeah, black swans, which I always thought were, you know, endemic to WA only. And then on my first trip to Tasmania, realised I was very wrong. Um, yeah, just having a bit of a swim in the beach. Mm. It's quite funny, yeah. and it was a rough, bit of a rough sea. It wasn't It wasn't a calm sea, and they're just bobbing around. Yeah, um, and then that was. <laughs> So I'll preface this story with on the bus trip out, we were kind of as a get to know you told to tell everyone your secret superpower. And my one I said to everyone, look, you're not going to see any like cool wildlife while I'm around because I just repel them and I'm just unlucky. So I was taking photos at the back of the group around this time and everyone at the front was kind of just staring off into the bush and lo and behold, there's a wombat on the beach. And just as we arrive, it has scampled off and I get to see it. <laughs> Typical Mark. Yeah. So that was right below where we we're going to stay the, the night at um, Forrester's Beach Camp as well. It was um, a funny moment because one of the guides had rushed off um, to prepare dinner and everything and got into camp and he's just like, you'll never believe what I saw. I was just like, I know, a wombat. <laughs> yeah. So um, Forrester's Beach Camp, I noticed that it's not a lodge. No. I probably should have read the trip notes a bit more carefully, but I assumed it would be like a cool, you're on the beach, there's decks and glamping tents and yeah, everything. a bit but... more ecology, I think, than what we were confronted with. And I didn't realise that there wouldn't be a shower either because we'd sort of had that previously with Tassie Walking Co. So when you've been expecting a shower all day and then you get there and realise it's not there, it's a slight letdown. But mm. again, our fault for not reading the notes a bit more careful. Mm. Yeah, But it was still a nice place. It was set behind the dunes and it was basically a boardwalk and then a whole load of like gazebo style tents that could close up and we had a couple of mattresses and sleeping bags for the night. And then yeah. there was like a main dining area. Yeah. Slash kitchen. And we had um so we had sort of single beds in, in those pushed up against um two walls rather than getting to, you know, cuddle in the cold. <laughs> so I didn't get a knee in my back no, <laughs> the whole and, night. No, and they had um the sleeping bags were waiting for us so we didn't have to carry our own. All you had to carry was um the liner, which is what we got changed. So mm. and then you took that back with you. Yeah, it was a, a fun night and we got to see a blood moon rising over the ocean, which was really cool and it was, a, it was an all right sunset. It glowed a little bit, but I was the only one that went out to see it. I kind of noticed it was there, and then all of a sudden, the colours kind of dulled. Everyone was enjoying their wine and cheese. Mm. Mm. So tell us a bit about the food and drink service. Drinks on night one was kind of limited because it was one beer per person or like half a bottle of wine. I think they were more limited in, in the access compared to the other lodge, so there right. was definite rations. Yeah. Mm. Which I kind of, I, try, I don't drink beer, so I traded my beer to one of the young guys. <laughs> and then dinner was salmon. salmon on the barbecue with kind of a, I think it was a Vietnamese Noodle salad. Noodle salad yeah. thing. It was really good. Like, it was perfect for the end of the good. day. It was so good. Yeah. The thing that Tazzy Walking Code does is they perfect recipes that don't require a lot of 
food to be carried in or not heavy food at least so there's lots of salads lots of good flavors um yeah just simple things to cook that the guides can prepare easily awesome cool so then day two which is i see the longest day yes longest day of walking they kind of prepare you at the start to be like you're going to arrive at the lodge pretty stuffed um, but it actually wasn't too bad in about mm. 15 or 16 k's mm. yeah it's a bit better than the um when you do the previous one that we did um was that it got worse like not worse but harder every day and so by the end you're really tired whereas this one you had your peak day on day two so you could actually sort of enjoy the last two days rather than think oh gosh it's going to be even worse tomorrow mm. Mm. but the start of the day was pretty cool because we went inland to start and it was um along the marsupial lawns that they call them it's basically just natural grass in a clearing and we got there and there was two bennett's wallabies which are not normal wallabies <laughs> <laughs> no um, they were just grazing around and then kind of like switching in between these marsupial lawns. We saw some Tasmanian devil scat. Which was very exciting and the closest we got to any devils. Yeah, so mm. I was a little bit excited that we might see a Tasmanian devil, but... Your superpower is yeah, what it is, Mark. I know, I can't, I can't hide that. And then we reached Broad Creek, which was quite funny because your family name is Broad. So we got a picture with Karis and her aunt. We were, did. One is technically abroad and you're from broads. <laughs> it was a really cool area because it kind of on the other side of the bank had like rainbow vegetation. That On certain lighting, it looked multicolored. Really? Yeah. Okay. Really weird. I didn't notice it at the start and then someone pointed it out. I was like, I really hope this comes out in the photos. And I think it did. Mm. I don't know, you can judge for yourself. Yeah, on some days they said we actually have to cross or wade across the creek, but um, it was a pretty low day, so luckily we didn't have to get our feet wet just yet. Mm. Yeah, so just on from that is Deep Creek, which we do <laughs> we did <laughs> have to. Sadly, so yes, it's So there's Broad deep. Creek and Deep Creek. Deep Creek. So Deep Creek, not very deep, but it was, I don't know, but it was knee height on me, so it was a little bit higher for you. It's deep when you're wearing long pants that you have to roll up. Yeah, so we <laughs> ought to take our shoes off and do that. It was quite hilarious watching Karis because she kind of did like dogs with socks, like what Alyssa does. Oh, I was just trying very hard not to get my pants wet knowing I'd have to wear them for the rest of the day. I mean, I know they're quick drying, but still. And then when we got to the other end, you didn't just stop. You had to scramble over some rocks. And if you slipped, there was a long way to fall. Like there was big crevices in between them. So I was very conscious of don't get airlifted out on day two. Mm. Um, and so it was a bit of mind over matter. And The, gui um, the guides helped you a lot as yeah, well. Yeah. So Joel, the lead guide, is also an avid uh, rock climber. So I just had to like mentally say, right, he's a rock professional rock climber. Put myself in his hands and let them um, help me across. And yeah. Then we oh, rewarded oh. ourselves with a snack for yeah. surviving. I was just there laughing at you. He was, and taking photographs. <laughs> uh, that was fun. Um, but yeah, it's just, then at that point, there was like really, really cool orange rocks as well. Because I mean, we had blue sky this time. Um, I was loving loving taking photos there. And it was that, that blue reminiscent of, of, again, of like Dunsborough or Yelling Up or Rotnest. It was that vivid, um, bright blue. And then from there, it was kind of just a lot of beach walking. Where Deep Creek is, there's a couple, there's a few like beach shacks. So there's public access there and there was a family picnicking on the beach and some kids climbing in the dunes. The beach shacks are quite amazing though, because they're on, they're, it's national park or yeah. um, government land, but basically these people had these shacks in their families for years since before that and basically mm. they have they're not allowed to sell them they have to pay heaps of rates for no services and they can only sort of transfer them to family members and then once they're gone you know you can't upgrade or do anything to them so everyone's sort of hanging on to them for dear life yeah which would be pretty cool um shack to go to i can imagine <laughs> They have those in uh, Cradle Mountain as well, where there's these people who have owned them for, for you know generations. And before it was a national park, you could build it. And no one ever wants to get rid of them because <laughs> you'll it, it's a one-way street. Yeah, you can't get them back. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That was kind of, it was cool, but at the same time, it like reminded you that, oh, you're not on the Three Capes or somewhere where you're not going to see people. Um, but yeah, yeah it, was, it wasn't too bad. And then that really, really long bay... Um, there was, I think it's called Picnic Rock in the middle, and Joel was just like, it's going to change shape as we move around. And I think he said there was like four different things he thought. Yeah, like it a turtle like. and an elephant. Yeah. I couldn't see any of them. I <laughs> saw a dog and then a map of Australia, but he just looked at me as like, no. <laughs> 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 All right. 
Incorrect. Yeah. Uh, and Your we... interpretation is wrong. Yes. <laughs> Um, and then we reached the four by four track, which I kind of I thought of you when we reached this. <laughs> um, there was a few four wheel drives driving past um, as we were waiting for everyone, and yeah, I was just like, "Are we really going to be walking on four wheel drive track?" But it was like two hundred meters, and then we we're back on okay. single track. Yeah, that's that's all right. And the other important thing was where the four by four started. There was a bathroom stop. I could have real toilets. So everyone yeah. was quite happy about that. Which was something you were quite nervous about for this trip. <laughs> You're not just, one for I nature. I just like my facilities. Mm. Yeah. And then after that, back onto the beach for another really kind of, I don't know, like not so so, but just kind of more of the same. And then this beach, there was this random onions. Yeah. They, these onions had washed up and Mark took a couple of photos. I said, you should make like a, you know, this interesting surrealist series of these onions on this beach. Yeah. Onion number one, onion two. Was, this, yeah. was Tony Abbott there previously? Oh, he might have been. <laughs> anyway, um, at the end of this beach, we kind of we crossed over and it was near the Eddie Stone Point Lighthouse. And for some reason, did it feel like this for you, where we crossed over the headland and even though we were going still south, it felt like we had switched around 180. We did have to kind of go up. Um, it gave me very much round the twist vibes. It looked exactly like that lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then I started singing this song much to Mark's eye because apparently he hates it. Do you? I was just never a fan as a kid of Round the Twist. I think it was the spaghetti episode where they started throwing it all up or something. I was just like, no, I don't like this. No, it's the, the, the best one's the one with the fox that they bury underneath the lemon tree. Sorry, I digress. <laughs> All I remember is up the pong from season two and the kid like didn't didn't wash his feet. <laughs> which is terribly disgusting. Disturbing, disturbing. Yeah. Um, so we got to it's actually called Bay of Fires Beach on the other side of this headland. And we stopped for lunch and this was like proper Bay of Fires, like what you expect. Yeah, and that's what they called it. They said this is the start of Bay of Fire proper. Yeah. Um, yeah, really, really cool, like bright orange, turquoise waters, you know, white sand. And then you had the lighthouse in the distance, which we went to after lunch. Um, it was a little bit of a side trip where Joel, there's this um, guides challenge where you have to climb or so you have to go circumnavigate. around. Yeah, circumnavigate the base of the lighthouse without touching the ground. Which is really I like it's, rock climbing. Yeah, it's trickier than it sounds because there's a set of stairs that you actually have to go under. Um, like a big stone staircase. And a big door. And a big door. Which but is a big gap. Yeah. He's a rock climber, so he did it and we all cheered. And it didn't take much convincing for him to be like, okay, I'll do it. It also gave a few people opportunity to check their phones because we were up at the high point. Yeah. <laughs> kind of spoiled the serenity. So did anyone else try? No. <laughs> it took him quite a bit to do and I think people were ready to uh, continue with the walking and get to the, the fancy lodge. Yep. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so yeah, continued on and it was really hard sand. It was about a three kilometer beach walk, this one. So we got told we could take our shoes off if we really wanted to. So that's what I did. And I think Hal did as well. I... Yeah, for a brief period before he remembered his sensibilities and put his shoes back on. Yeah. So I, I told him about grounding as an experience where you connect with nature and, um, he said it was some hippy dippy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it does sound like some hippy dippy stuff. <laughs> I, just, I just, it was so nice. I just wanted my feet in the water because I wanted to go for a swim, but I didn't really have a proper towel. So, no, um, Charlie went for a swim. Um, yeah. one of the the young guys in the family, but he said it was very, very cold because that's mm. when we're sort of hitting that is the easternmost point of um Tasmania, I think. So, it's pretty cold. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this beach walking was pretty cool. I um got the phone out and played I Still Call Australia Home. He's obsessed with that song. It's it's a good song. It just felt like you're in a Qantas yeah. commercial. Um, bright blue skies, fluffy clouds, nice beach. You're spoiling the serenity though. I was going to sing it anyway. I mean, <laughs> you couldn't, it was like windy enough that you couldn't hear anyone That's true. Um, further on. So I make no apologies mm. for playing that song. Um, but after that, yeah, we got into Shell Coves, which was um, natural middens, you know, I would say. This is basically like Shell Beach up north or Hearson's Cove. It's just the whole beach is shells. Yes, yeah, and right. you, you can tell that it's all it's all been natural there. And it's just built built up compared to the middens. There's different kinds of shells in them. Mm. Um, and that was, yeah, it was really crunchy under your feet and mm. you I kind felt of kind like, of bad. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, I don't want to step here. And he's like, I'll just do it anyway. <laughs> you, you can't avoid it really because they're just everywhere. They're like, you can imagine you'd dig like two metres under and there'd still be shells. Mm. 
And you're up like quite um, high cliffs that goes up to, and they're they're up in the cliffs. Like it, it's crazy. Oh really? Yeah. Like you're not like right on the ground. You're getting getting higher, and you're in in these big boulders, and there's just shells. So many shells. And then the the weather started to come over a little bit. I remember that being really cloudy. Um, as we're heading up the last beach and up the last headland, and then up to the lodge, which on the three capes. A couple of the, the people there had done this tour before and they were like, well, that hill at the end of day two up to the lodge, it's murder. And It really wasn't. <laughs> it was like 30 metres vertically. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then we had the uh, the lodge host because you could actually drive to the lodge. Um, and stay at the lodge? Just at the lodge? or No, 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 just like the people who worked there There's went home way. at the end of the day. Oh, okay. So they had... Two staff members, one that worked the day star, uh, day spa, and then one that worked at the lodge. Yeah. Um, there is a um, like a caretaker cottage there for the main um, lodge manager. Mm-hmm. Um, when we were there, we sort of had the the secondary lodge manager, but the normal um, lodge manager Zane, who came in with group two on day three, um, he actually was the son of one of the lighthouse keepers at the lighthouse. Oh, cool. so he's the re- last lighthouse keeper. Yeah. Yeah, so he's obviously very familiar with the area, so a perfect person to have as one of the guides. Yeah, mm. perfect. I guess in your CV you have that. You're like, yep, you're yeah. a shoe. You've <laughs> got the job. You've got a story. Um, but one thing, again, I didn't don't think I read the trip notes quite right, is we were staying with another group. So you stay there for two nights, and I didn't realise that you stayed, like there was another group that was there as well on night one and night two. Um, so it was kind of a not weird thing, but it was just like, oh, yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's happening. And, yeah, so there's two separate wings. So um, there was... The wing um, at the, the, I guess, the back at the... Uh, the west the wing and an end. east wing. Yeah, the west wing, which is where we stayed, and then the other group stayed in the east wing. What? Oh, right, we're on the wrong side of Australia. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> we stayed in the east wing. You want to start coast- from the beginning? <laughs> no, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're staying on the coast, the coast end, which is the east wing. Um, but before we got shown to our rooms and everything, they'd arranged um, foot baths for us. So there was warm water in these little sinks and peppermint oil and Epsom salts, I want to say. Although apparently depending on where you were, depending on how warm your foot bath was, depending oh. on which order they were done in, because mm. obviously they have to boil, boil it on the stove and then do all of them. So luckily we both had some yeah. nice warm ones on the end. Yeah. And then there um, Francesco explained the lodge and what was going on and took our drink orders, which was nice, and then just left us to be until we wanted to go find our room. So when you say drink orders now, you had a more yes. a greater choice? A, a more liberal application of yes. the, uh, the alcohol. Although we did realise on, on the last day, we were sort of at the end of a... While they have frequent access, they also still do drops of, you know, when the alcohol gets delivered and when certain things get delivered. And we were at the end of a period right before the alcohol was going to be delivered. So we sadly ran out of champagne. Oh no, how did you live? Devastating. Yeah. So and when you say champagne, Tasmanian sparkly? Yes, Tasmanian sparkly. Which was is not from France. as good. Yeah, really. yeah. The, the wine was very lovely. Um, so the lodge is, is super fantastic. This is one of the, probably the first eco lodges, I want to say, that's been built in Australia. So it was, He said it was 20 years old, I think. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was built in the late 90s. Um, and there was a book that they had in a day spa that showed all these lodges from the world, and that was in it. So it's. I mean, it's, yeah, it's the basis for Tasmanian Walking Company's mm. lodges. You get the feel here that it's influenced Three Capes. And it hasn't aged really as well. Like, it, it's the architecture is very similar to the Three Capes Lodge, but you, you don't think, oh, that was built 20 years ago. Um, and one of the other really cool facts they had was the way it's built. It's a quite a long, thin sort of um, layout is they managed to build it without having to um, cut down any of the, the trees. So... That's pretty amazing. Fantastic. They built it sort of around what was already there. Mm. Yeah. And I know there's kind of like the theme of let's not build huts or lodges anymore is because they're in national parks and it's only for the rich. But this was actually private land that they bought. It was set aside for a, a big fishing village, um, which was, I think, turned into Anson's Bay, which is a lot smaller now. Um, mm. So that's, yeah, it's they've got a private beach and the whole like section of land around is owned by them so mm. it's not within national park that they were granted rights like on on the three mm. capes. but they still managed to you know obviously respect the land that was there which is mm. nice to see yeah it does blend in quite nicely you can see it from the beach but it's it's not overpowering no while you're there. it doesn't interrupt interrupt the view and yeah. then a short 
Well, how far away? 15 metres away from it. Um, mm. They've got the little spa where you can have your spa treatments. Which we'll talk about on day four because yeah. someone got to enjoy that. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of day two. And then we had a nice dinner, which I can't actually remember what that was. <laughs> it, was um, it was nice. Yeah, and then Jesse played some songs for us, which I'm hoping, I mean, we'll find out at the end of the episode. I'm hoping to, I recorded some of them. I'm hoping we can get that as the outro. Um, for the podcast so stay tuned to the end to see if i actually managed to make that happen (laughs) oh the suspense Mm. and um because luckily you know there was a higher ration even though it was the end of alcohol people drank enough to be quite jolly and have a few things around um the living room that night yeah so jesse was taking requests except he couldn't play spice girls because the um app he had (laughs) <laughs> wasn't Didn't, working yeah, with the bad reception. Wasn't playing it properly. <laughs> we we did, got some Layla in there, Wonderwall. Yeah, everyone loves a big group Wonderwall Mon- sing along. Munford and Sons. We did retire fairly early though after that yeah. being our longest day. So we, we took advantage of the nice, comfortable king size bed. Mm. So pretty much like the three capes in the bathrooms are the same, the rooms are the same, the kind of like the wood panelling and everything. It's all all fantastic. Yeah, and each group, like we said, there was two groups in there at a time. So obviously there was a group that had been there the night before us when we arrived. Um, they had their own, of course, their own wing, and that also includes their own bathroom. And the good thing is because you're coming and going at different times, normally the two groups aren't showering at the same time, so it doubles the amount of showers you've got. And especially with a smaller group than the last walk, um, it was good to know you could get clean nice and quickly after your long walk. Okay, so day three. Now, this is a bit of an interesting day because it's not just hiking. No, so the lodge walk actually turned into a lodge kayak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so most of the day was spent kayaking or more it walking? It was probably more, it was a couple of hours plus um, lunch and a stop. Mm. It was definitely the feature of the day. Yeah, mm. it was something to look forward to. Um, yeah, definitely reading the trip notes properly. <laughs> um, <laughs> highlight this day as like a, a cool um, activity to do that wasn't just walking along beaches. I think that's kind of why they include it because otherwise it could get quite monotonous Mm. walking around Um, but it was kind of a a weird thing i'm not sure if you felt it either but we walked four kilometers out through some really nice forests lots of ferns and everything and then we got into a a bus got on a bus to be taken to what the kayaking (laughs) spot And it's it like felt- in Survivor where they don't tell you they put them all on the bus, but we got on the bus. Yeah, that's what I wrote in the post. I was just like, my illusion was shattered that this was going to be like a proper through hike. But um, the reason for that was that obviously we they take us to the point where we kayak and essentially we almost kayak back to the start. Right. So they had to take us away to allow us to do that unless you wanted to have a very long walk. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a very long bus ride, but it was, no. <laughs> it was still quite funny. And then we met, there was a lady there who just dealt with the um, the kayaks, so unloaded them all for us. They were all waiting, and then we got into our Nerd Burger dry suit skirt things. Yeah, the weird skirts, and she you know, ran us through the safety and things, and then we pretty much jumped straight into the little river, creek? River, so it's river. The, An- the Anson's River, and then that turns into Anson's Bay, which is quite large, and you can see it from the lodge as well. So we shared a double kayak... Um, I lost that coin toss with Hal. <laughs> um, but we did all right. We kind yeah. of stuck around the back, mainly because I wanted to take my proper camera and get some shots rather than just leave a you know insert scene here in the blog. So every time I wanted to get it out, I had to undo a dry sack, get it out, <laughs> take some photos, put Tell it back in. Tell me to stop paddling. No, no, you could keep paddling if you wanted to. <laughs> I, was, I was too worried about accidentally flicking your camera somehow. Yeah. But um, it was quite. It was really beautiful. Um, it's kind of some somewhat reminded me a bit of Canning, Canning River. Yeah. So you're, you're going along, and there's forest either side. There was a sea eagle's nest. Yeah, that was really cool. Mm. It was massive, like so huge. Mm. Um, so the big double kayaks. Not a big worry. You're going to capsize them. But I'm pretty sure Tom and Charlie were trying to capsize. capsize. <laughs> yes. One so, of them had their, was with their mum and one was with their father and I think they were trying to crush into each yeah. other. <laughs> like you just watch and they'd just be on the side of the banks like pointing in the different direction. <laughs> like how did you get there no. and why? But it was very um very calm obviously through because you're quite protected but we did pull over sort of halfway through that section to sort of have a tea break. Normally they pull into a... Um, a boat ramp area but unfortunately there was a boat utilizing it so we kind of pulled up on a on a little embankment there um, yeah, it was the same snack. rainbow vegetation or this was a bit red 
And I think one of the guides explained that it was kind of like Zamfire where you could use it in gourmet dishes to add like saltiness to it. Mm. But we had chocolate, so we didn't really partake. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't give it a try. Yep. Yeah. And then from there, after we had a bit of a break, we um, paddled out towards the bay. So it was kind of iffy. If it's windy, they kind of do other things and take you off. Um, yeah, to you can the kind edge. of abandon ship and um, basically yeah. the bus picks you up a bit earlier. <laughs> right. But we were very lucky that it was pretty calm um, crossing the bay. It did get quite choppy at one point and you... You weren't doing fantastically well, well. Didn't they say that I think it was worse the day before, and then the the group that went through the day after us didn't cross because it was it was too um, too dangerous essentially. But when we got there, it looked all right, and because we'd just been through this really calm part, we thought, yeah, this is fine. And then when we got into like the midst of this very large um, inland sort of lake, it got very choppy. It was very windy. You were getting wet, and it was it was some hard work with the paddles. Yeah. So we were the last ones to get there. We were very slow. <laughs> so Amy and Gordon, the professional couple, like just powered ahead. Like they were a speck. Yeah, well, kayak, kayaking is one of their hobbies. So they were just, oh, okay. it was easy yeah. for them. Yeah. So they were going to the Whit Sundays after. For more kayaking. For this oh, trip for really? More, for like a six day kayaking trip. So, like, yeah, they knew what they were doing and we were just kind of floundering at the back. Yeah. We got there at the end and had um, pulled up to the other side of the lake in, I think it was called Shark Bay. Shark Bay. Shark Bay and had really? some lunch. Yeah. I, apparently there was no sharks. Um, so but interesting name. We got told there could be stingrays. But, um, but, there, but there were was, not. But there wasn't because I was yeah. there. Um, there was lots of um, like seagrass um, in the lake as we were crossing it. And all I could think of was like dugongs or man, you know manatees or anything. And um, apparently they don't have any there. <laughs> well, not the area we were in. Um, so yeah, lunch was on the other side of the bay. And yeah, it was just a really pleasant spot. It wasn't. It was pretty protected. There was no wind there. It was nice and sunny and we had a blanket out and just just picturesque. I'll yeah. That way. So the same lady who'd organized our kayaks at the beginning, she met us at the end because obviously she needs to collect her kayaks and she'd laid out like these cute little picnic blankets and she'd brought our lunch so we didn't have to carry it um, on the kayaking trip. So that was really, really nice. And also had, of course, the billy can for tea and coffee. Cool. So what kind of lunch do you get on these uh, they're very big fans of like noodle or pasta salads. Mm-hmm. Um, so either, you know, um, like an Asian inspired noodle salad and they will, they're always really, really tasty. They get the balance of flavors really well. Being that Mark and I don't eat meat, it's always, like on our last trip with Tasmania Walking Co, we were the only ones with dietary requirements and it was in a group, big group of 14. You kind of felt, oh, we're that, those annoying guys. But in this group, you know, there was us and, and my uncle who, who don't eat meat. Then, um, then we had a person who was gluten and dairy intolerant and then we had another person who was dairy intolerant and vegetarian so we felt like it wasn't just us because 50 percent of the group had these requirements so that yep. was quite good yeah. but they were quite good at accommodating for us and we got you know they changed the meals to suit us which was really nice yeah i think a lot of the meals anyway that they have is just salad and then a tin of tuna so it's not they're not making big concessions for us yeah it's just sort of what they added and things like yeah. that but we just we just don't eat tuna, so <laughs> it's like we just but, give it back. But yeah. all the Tim meals are huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the meals are huge um, and good flavors. So they and always they were satisfying. The, the same biscuits that you enjoyed on the three. Oh, cakes. the biscuits, which I very de- depressingly last time I was sold that they're made special for them. You can't get them anywhere, and then this time I was saying, oh, I've been waiting for these because you no, know, I was can't buy them anywhere it's like there's a cafe in Launceston that's uh, where the guy who makes them works so I was like no one told me I mean we were literally obviously like in Launceston just prior so I missed my opportunity to buy some so you didn't have any on the way back afterwards we didn't go back to Launceston uh, yeah no. we went through well, we were through Launceston but we were literally only picking up the hire car and then driving mm. out yeah. so yeah. next time we're in Launceston yeah. um so from lunch we had another creek crossing which was um much um, yeah. shallower. <laughs> we already already had our shoes off, so it didn't matter. And then kind of along the bay, there were some really cool paper barks, which um, yeah, I was a bit surprised at mm. to see them there. And then onto the dunes, which I loved like immensely. Just, it was really calm. Kind of you could at some points not see the ocean, and then at some points it was just like this tiny little sliver. Um, yeah, it's that um sort of Star Wars feeling. Yeah, I dunes. was kind of like, Maybe Northern Africa or Namibia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm picking a different universe. Yeah. But it was uh, nice. And it, I think technically they said if you just were walking it as a walk, it would be about half an hour, but we, we pretty much dawdled yeah, to I enjoy was the scenery. Stopping 
quite frequently to take photos. Um, yeah. And was, I was stopping to pick up shells. <laughs> yeah. It was just one of those spots where I just, I'll remember probably for the rest of my life. It was that good. Awesome. So was this day one of the best days or? I would probably rank this the second best day out of all of them. After the... After the second day. Yeah, I kind of got that impression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really good day. Yeah, I'd probably say the same thing. Yeah, mainly because the start of the day wasn't... It was nice, but it wasn't like, blow your socks off. Right. Nice. Yeah, it wasn't most action-packed. Of, yeah, most of day two was probably like that. So where... I saw some photos on your blog of what looked like burnt forest, <laughs> and that made me feel at home... Because it looked yeah. very West Australian. So where was that in, in this? So that would have been the start of day three and the start of day four. Okay. Um, it's amazing that you picked up on that because walking through it, I didn't really think that it looked terribly burnt. But I don't know, maybe it's just I have ingra- a super ingra- sense. Yeah, ingrained <laughs> in your psyche that <laughs> everything is burnt. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously it wasn't due to prescribed burns recently so it had had a chance to um recover and it was, everything was quite green and lush yeah no it, it didn't look offensively burnt no the forest there again quite nice it's dry forest but you've got ferns everywhere so it feels lush, lush and wet mm. um so yeah and then once we got to the end of the dune system it was kind of like the mirror image of the end of the last day we've got a few granite headlands um lots of orange lichen rocks and then onto the private beach and then up to the lodge yeah, a bit more rock scrambling um but there was sort of a trail as you sort of went up the hill i guess yeah i think joel lost the trail a couple of times because he stopped and he was just like looking around and then like, you would have to backtrack and go around but <laughs> We got there in the end. It kind of reminded me of of the first day, actually, because Jesse and Joel were sort of... Because Jesse had done the hike only once before, but he'd gone a different way to the way that Joel always went. So they're like, this isn't the way way I know. And like, okay, they keep changing it. It was quite funny because they were sort of not arguing, but having discussions over which way was the correct (laughs) way. Um, So, yeah, and then we got back to the lodge and we were in a bit earlier than we were the previous day. So we had a chance to chill and... Got told to practice being intimidating for the next group well, coming yeah. in. Well, the joke is that because you come back first, you get to stake out your place and, uh, and that's your territory. And then when the new group comes in, you've already picked the best spot. Hmm. But, but it was just, yeah, I think I was on the couch just reading a book. It's kind of hard to be intimidating. Yeah, <laughs> and of course, that. we get to use the showers before everyone else. Yeah. So that, that works well. Again, so everyone has the, the full access to the four showers, which is and nice. And then that night, we got the outdoor fire pit which the group the previous night had, um, but we didn't. Well, the, I think the, the other thing was the, the previous group that went through thus, they literally all knew each other. So it was like the whole group, I think apart from one couple or one person, had all been from England and they'd come over for a wedding and then the wedding was cancelled and they changed the trip to be this. Oh, really? <laughs> so they were having a grand old time. Yep. But yeah, um, everyone had a few glasses of wine around the fire. Yeah, and Jesse, we coaxed Jesse back to sing a small song. <laughs> <laughs> and we also got to see the moon rising over the ocean again. It wasn't quite as red as the other night, but it was still looked pretty cool. Yeah, and you and um, one of the other guys, Gordon, got your, your cameras out and took some pretty pictures. Yeah, Gordon had, I don't know, maybe like five to $10,000 worth of camera equipment. <laughs> really? <laughs> he was quite prepared, whereas I was just with the same one I always have, this being being bashed around mm. and been wet and probably should be dead by now but it still takes photos yeah so day four i see here i've got a note that it was uh, um an extremely long day of 3.5 kilometers yeah it was um that sounds very arduous so it was like the sterling ridge where 3.5 kilometers doesn't sound like much but it actually is really yeah. <laughs> no. So we were. It was walk- very relaxed. We were walking uphill, but it was a very tiny hill. Well, let's just start at the beginning of the day. Yeah. Where um originally I had planned to partake in one of the spa treatments, um which I had planned for day two, but unfortunately I hadn't planned very well ahead. In that the I wanted to have the sunset spot, and of course the sun setting a lot earlier, so there weren't as many spots. So I realised my spot was a bit too dark. Um, so I rescheduled it for the last morning thinking I won't be rushed, be relaxed. So I decided to have a Tasmanian peat bath. Um, so we wandered down to the lodge and uh, Mark came with me briefly to take a few pictures and then wandered off. Um, but it was quite relaxing. They put some oils in the bath and you've just got that uninterrupted view where you can just relax. And 
I um, put a podcast on for part of it, after half Serenity, half podcast, um, and what, had my glass of wine. Which episode of Real Trail Talk did you <laughs> listen to? All of them. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so <laughs> day four was actually um, just like a, a lounge around the lodge day. So we weren't leaving until 12 o'clock. So we had the whole morning to do whatever we wanted. There's a series of walk trails that go around the lodge that we could have done. You had your appointment at nine. Yes. So we kind of chilled until then. And I actually did Pilates out on the deck while you were doing that, which was very relaxing because you just had the sound of the ocean and it was quite a warm morning. And after that, we went down to the beach to have a little bit of a, a play yeah. and explore. Mark stayed a bit longer. And when I got back, they uh, brought out the morning tea, which was, uh, I think it was some sort of cake. And then Mark's favorite, the hot crust buns. And I was like, I can't even text him to tell him they're here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, while I was busy chasing crabs into crevices and arguing with seagulls, um, yeah, there was hot crust buns <laughs> waiting. Luckily, there was still a couple when I got back. Yeah. And then we um, you packed up our things and... 12 o'clock we, we we left out of there via a similar trail to the trail we went out on day three but then it took a bit of a, a turn yeah so joel explained it is the um the forest is hugging you goodbye and it, it was almost true because there was some really thick ferns that there was no real defined trail that you could yeah. see and um, they're about chest height the ferns so you feel like you're proper yeah. proper going through the forest so i wouldn't want to be there when it was wet because you'd just get drenched mm. um but it was a nice way to end and there was a bus waiting for us um not waiting for us because um, we, we stopped oh, yeah, and had lunch sorry. for a bit. And then the bus driver emerged from the forest and you didn't know where he'd come from. Um, so the bus was quite hidden. And we saw some Tasmanian devil tracks on the way out too, which was pretty cool. Did we? Yeah. Oh. In the sand of the tracks. You're probably too busy taking photos. Maybe you didn't even see it because that's no. your yeah. superpower. No, that was day three. <laughs> no, it was the last day. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Okay. Maybe I was back taking photos. And probably. Yeah. And then from there, it was this. everyone was really beat. Um, even though we'd walked 3.5 mm. <laughs> Yeah, we found some logs to sit on and have our, our last lunch together. Yeah. And we did, did another one of those, I guess, cheesy camp activities where we went through what we'd... What was it, a stick and a rock? No, it was um, a leaf, a stick, yeah, and, a, and rock. a rock. Yeah, yeah. so it was, it was, what are you going to leaf here with? What really... What's going to um, stick with you? Yeah, what's going to stick with you and what rocked your world. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, which is funny. The funniest bit was when Hal went and he was just like... This is not his sort of thing. <laughs> this is... The food was great. The guides were good. <laughs> and everyone just like, what? The, gr- the guides were great. Like, what are you trying to say? No. And yeah, it was, it was a nice little way or to end. He, he might have said like, you know, the food was great. Something else was good. And then he kind of stopped and we're all just like, what, the guides would have been okay or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a good way to finish and a little bit cheesy, but still pretty good yeah. and that was pretty much the end we jumped on the bus and had a very long bus ride back to uh launceston mm. so you slept on my shoulder for most of it oh, well it was it, i was very tired and it was the, the roads in tasmania they're so windy and if you get they are. sick in the car it, it is not enjoyable <laughs> and it was raining as well just to add into it and the, the bus drivers there because they're locals they drive no, they don't make um, accommodations for the windy roads, I guess is the best way to say. Yeah, so it's a rough yeah. ride. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken that road back from, I think it must be the same one you, that you're talking about, where it goes through the pass and then back to Launceston. And it's very windy. <laughs> very windy. Yeah. Well, I tried to knock myself out for most of it sleeping. Yeah. Um, so the trip actually finished at a place called Design Tasmania, which is like a local art gallery where they use local woods. And there was some ceramics there. But it was kind of everyone was a bit beat and it was raining um we had to get our hire car we were originally going to stop off at the airport because they said we were going to be back at 5 30 and that's when the um place in town closes for the hire cars so it was like i'll change my booking and then i was rushing and i didn't get to say goodbye to everyone (laughs) which was a bit annoying i regretted not being able to do that um so hopefully if you're listening to this and you were part of the trip you could contact us (laughs) I uploaded some photos with my email address to the um, the group thing that got created for the, the hike, but no one's responded or said anything oh to me. <laughs> so yeah, that was the trip. Awesome. So just a few questions, I guess. Um, in terms of, now you've done some other coastal walks. So you've done the Haikia Trail, Mamang Trail. You've done, you know, half of the Cape to Cape. How does this rate in terms of those experiences, in, in terms of the walking? I mean, obviously, the, the 
<laughs> the, the lodge yeah, yeah. experience will be much better than any of those other ones. But in terms of the the walking itself, um, it actually does rate quite up there. I'm still going to rate Fitzgerald River um, as better, but because the east coast of Tassie doesn't get any wind, you get to enjoy it a lot more. As weird as that sounds, like because in WA you're so used to the wind, it shouldn't be an issue. So as soon as you notice that it's not there. Mm. It just becomes so much more enjoyable. Yeah, the beaches are pretty much the same. It's the same type of terrain. Um, rocky headlands, white sandy beaches, nice water. So I would probably rank it a little bit below WA coastal hikes. Um, but then obviously we don't have the lodge part of it <laughs> yep. in WA, although the, you can kind of do that on the Cape to Cape um, if you elect to stay in nice accommodations in the towns. Yeah. And so this is your second glut walk are you guys looking at doing a third one in the future there was a brief discussion perhaps actually of going what to new zealand i think um so far we haven't haven't had sort of discussions but i i am quite taken there's a bay of not bay of fires but there's like a one you do that's on the sailboat on the coast okay. and you stop in and do yeah, day so trips it's... and then you sleep on the sailboat so i mean i'm just putting my hand up to say i'll go to that <laughs> Well, that you, sounds pretty cool. You, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's the Wine Glass Bay one. Oh, you that's you didn't get to see Wine Glass Bay when we went because you didn't quite make it up the hill. No, I, I sadly, no, I did not make it up the hill. I caught a cold on the plane, which hit me on day three of the hiking trip. So by the time we actually got to the end and I hadn't rested, I had to retire in the car for the uh, walk up. What was the mountain called? Um, it wasn't. It was just a wine glass bay look. <laughs> <laughs> Not Mount Amos. Just Not the Mount Amos, oh, so yeah. yeah. Well, it's next to Mount Amos, but you know. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like, I would probably not do any of the other Tasmanian Walking Company tours. They do have a Kangaroo Island one though, which would be quite nice. Yeah, maybe one day. But there's the they do one on the Overland, which I think they call the Cradle Mountain Tour. But I want to yeah. do that mm. properly in the public huts. And, okay. Yeah. yeah. They have made investment into the Australian Walking Company, which currently is what services Kangaroo Island. So you never know, they might bring some similar situations, hopefully to WA in the future. Maybe in the West Cape, how to Tondirup. I, oh, I know yes. of I know a volunteer who'd like to work at the lodge. <laughs> you? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, obviously you guys enjoyed the experience and something you'd recommend to others to do. Who who would be the the target market? You reckon? I would actually say because this is one of the cheaper ones that they do offer. I would say this is anyone who's a professional in their thirties or above, um, ranging to retirees. Like it's with there's a pretty varied lot of groups that we saw. Mm. And I think you could. Um, it, it's something that you know, if you're a bit older, you could still manage to do it. You know, um, there were what four people in our group who'd be in their early 60s or late 50s yeah. um, and they didn't struggle um, we had one of the young guys who just had knee surgery and he had no like as in three weeks prior um, and he did it fine so it, it would be a good starting one definitely not as challenging as the three capes that's for sure so good for a good range of um, abilities excellent so that was the bay of fires um, if anyone's interested um, please check out the life of pi the, uh, Mark has written up a, um, a fairly extensive <laughs> um, series of posts Way on too these. extensive. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess if you're looking to do this walk, the Tasmanian Walking Company website would be where to go. Yep, so there's links on my website. But yeah, if you type in Three Capes Lodge Walk, that'll probably be the first uh, Google hit you'll find. Awesome. Thank you, Karis, for coming in for this episode. Thanks for having me. And thank you, everyone, for listening. If you enjoyed this episode or any other episode of the pod, please um, give us a rating on iTunes, Podbean, or any of the other sites you can listen to us on. Mark has recently just added us to a stack of other sites. Yep, so we're on Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, and just basically any major podcast <laughs> provider. So I know we've said before to uh, subscribe on or listen to us on there, but we're actually on there now. We're now on everything. Yep. <laughs> cool. So we'll be back in two weeks, and thank you for listening.